So sleep is an essential part of our everyday life and having good sleep is honestly one of the best things. When you have a good sleep, it is your day is great. So optimizing your bedroom to allow yourself to try and get the best sleep possible every night is what this video is going to be jumping into. So the first thing I would do is change how you think about your bedroom. Now I think a lot of people, they don't think of your, their bedrooms as a place of relaxation and like solely as a place of sleep. They would often see it as something else. So maybe if you do work in your room, see it as a stressful place or you don't find it relaxing at all. So changing how you think about your bedroom would be a good first step. The next thing to do is to try and make your bedroom only for sleep. For a lot of people this isn't an option because we aren't all blessed with lots of space. But a way you can do this is to sort of designate different areas of your room for different, I guess, activities. So having one section of your room where your bed is for sleep and then maybe a corner for your work and sort of designating those areas for those tasks. You could also get room dividers to separate your room up if you've got the limited space but still want to separate say work from sleep and relaxation. So reducing the sound that comes into your bedroom is another great thing to do. So if you can't completely remove noise as I know a lot of people can't you could do something like having something that produces white noise. Using something that produces white noise can block out the distractions and other noises that come from the night or if you're a night shift worker from the day because they tend to sort of blur the other noises out. For white noise I use the sleep music or sleep casts that come on Headspace because that's the app I use to meditate but you could also if you don't like white noise I used to fall asleep all the time to audiobooks and I really enjoyed that fall asleep to podcasts there's meditations to fall asleep if complete silence is not possible or doesn't work for you then having one of those things to fall asleep to may help having no light in your bedrooms while you're trying to sleep is best and also reducing the amount of light exposure you have before bed is also good so before sleep trying to use low wattage more warm orange red light it's best as well as having dimmer lights. This light is my bedroom light and it is warm and it's not as red as some of the bulbs that you can buy and like change the color of but like the red is the best but having at least warm lights like this um, it doesn't stop the production of melatonin whereas my overhead light is very blue white and that blue light also is what is emitted from your phone and the blue light actually prevents melatonin from being secreted and that affects your sleep. I talked more about it in my previous sleep video and I'll link that in the cards and down below. So removing other things that produce light in your room, so say night lights or alarm clocks. If you need a night light, going with more of a red warm light rather than a blue light is best and also alarm clocks. So I used to have this one in my room and you can see the time there and this would like sit here and if I would wake up at all obviously the light would be shining. We wake up many times throughout the night and if you wake up, if I woke up facing this, um, one you've got the light exposure which will wake you up more and two you'll actually see the time and that sort of breaks up our sleep even more because you'll sort of wake up more than you normally would and now you know how long you have till you have to actually wake up and then that adds an extra layer of like thinking and I would say just remove digital clocks like this. If you need to, like an alarm clock like this, I'd just go for like one of those, what are they called, circle clocks. You get a Google Home. If you live in a place where street lights, sort of the light comes into your room, then you could always invest in blackout curtains. And the blackout curtains also sort of help with reducing the sound that comes into your room. And they're also good if you're a night shift worker and you sleep during the day. Next thing is having a cool room. So ideally the temperature that our room should be is around 18 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously this isn't achievable in all seasons, but there are some things that we can try and do to keep our the room of our temperature, the room of our temperature, the temperature of our room, the right, at the right level. 
So things you can use to maintain the level of temperature in your room is having a ceiling fan or like a floor fan, an aircon, lighter or heavier bedding, cooling pads, or you could sleep naked. Or again, if it's really cold, then you can just like layer on more pajamas, so warmer pajamas, that sort of thing. And curtains are also a great way to block out or keep in heat. So you want to try and make your bed comfortable. Now, I know this can often be expensive, but a lot of the times we have bad, broken, just not good quality sleep when our, I guess, equipment isn't right for us. So our mattress should be replaced every five to seven years, but that can get expensive and not everyone has the means to be able to replace it that often. So just looking for signs of wear in your mattress, so like really big divots, say in the middle, or stains and that sort of thing. Having a specific pillow for how you sleep, so there's different pillows for front, back, side sleepers. So you could go that method of finding the one that's like specifically for how you sleep, or if you found one that you really like, then just using that one. But then pillows should also be replaced every two years. I feel like a lot of people don't take, I guess, again, the equipment of sleep very, they don't see it as a necessity, but we spend so much of our life and days and just in general sleeping. Clearing out the clutter that is in your room just in general is another great way because one, if you wake up during the night and need to go to the toilet or get a drink or something, then you're not going to trip over something. And two, you are not, when you have a cleaner space when you're going to sleep, it's less stressful and you, at least for me, I feel like I can sleep better when my space is clean. If you can, if the weather permits it, if you don't have construction going on behind you like I do, I would say letting in some natural air. Hello, Pippi. Hi. Hi. Yeah. If you're really stuffy inside your room, that can be, I guess sometimes in the winter that can be like cozy, but a lot of the time it's the stuffier it is, it's sort of the more, I guess, not as comfortable it is to sleep in. But obviously sometimes having windows open isn't an option, so. That's just like a little bonus if possible. I sort of touched on it before when I was talking about the alarm clocks, but removing all technology from your room. So this goes for television, iPads, phones, etc. So really try and stop using technology about 90 minutes before you go to sleep. Although I know this is hard to do and pretty much no one really does it. So I'd say at least if you don't, if you're using this closer than 90 minutes, try and stop using this and doing something that doesn't involve technology before you go to bed. Whether that be reading a book or, I don't know, watering the plants, doing some journaling, just doing something else that doesn't involve just going on your phone and then straight away trying to go to sleep. In my last video about sleep, I talked a lot more about how blue light from our devices stops the production of melatonin, which is the hormone that is secreted for us to know when it's time to go to sleep. It's what makes us feel sleepy. So removing technology from your room helps that melatonin to be secreted and helps you to like smoothly go into sleep. So you wanna try and make your bedroom a no pets space in terms of like sleeping. Now obviously I let my cat sleep here during the day and sometimes I do let her sleep here at night when she's just too cute to move but I find that when I've got my cat in my room overnight, I always wake up when she wants to get out of my room and she like having her on, on my bed, obviously I don't have a big bed, so I'm sort of uncomfortably sleeping. So the quality of sleep drops. You get, at least for me, I get a broken sleep. Thank you for being in my video. You are asleep, aren't you? Sorry for disturbing you. Now. And something you should do on like a weekly or at least a bi-weekly basis is washing your sheets because if you're lying in them every night you might be sweating, you might still have dirt on you from the day so washing your sheets I think is an essential I guess cleanliness sort of thing to be doing. Another thing you can do is have plants and plants help clear out the air and make it fresher. 
There are also specific plants that are meant to clear the air as well, but also just having plants in general is good. So this isn't super researched or like confirmed, but lavender, lavender has been found to be really useful with relaxation and sort of sleep. So you can use essential oils in like a diffuser or directly onto the skin, or you can have a room spray that you spray around your room before you go to bed, or a pillow spray, which is something that I have. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and got some ideas that you can implement to make your bedroom a bit more, I guess, sleep appropriate or just like calmer environment. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then hopefully you'll stick around for more. I am going to link at the end of this video and down below my last video about sleep. So I'd recommend watching that too. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye. I've got light exposure into Why does dad walk so heavy it is always gonna be good It's just very nice. Hey, how you doing? Oh my god.